my name is Ashley, as hopefully you know, and I have been teaching about costuming and theater for the last two videos, and today I would like to talk about time periods, silhouette, and how that all goes into designing. But this week we have a theme for our um, organization called Activism Fine Arts. And today I'm going to be talking about how the LGBTQ community has influenced fashion history, has influenced um, t different time periods, and how it's a very big part of fashion and how that all goes into costuming. So don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe, and let's get into it. <laughs> So, like I said, we will be getting into LGBTQ fashion history, how the LGBT community has impacted fashion, also how silhouettes, time period, things like that, how those actually impact costuming, how it's super important to align your time periods with your silhouettes, your colors, your patterns, everything that goes into costuming with time periods will be talked about today, hopefully also just covering fashion um, history and how the LGBT community has been influencing that completely. So let's get into it. So we are going to begin pre-1900s, which will go into, oh, oops, which will go into 1800s, this is actually a costume sketch. Um, 1800s, the 1700s, which is right over here. As you can see, there's higher waistlines, actually. Um, puffed out sleeves, longer skirts that are flowy. Um, you can maybe see in the back here that it's corsetry, things like that. Um... This is really beautiful corsetry, very nice gold work, things like that. Italian Renaissance. Um, yes. What I, this is, this is more of, um, like, woodsy. This would be more of a peasant dress in the back. Uh, the color specifically, um. Things to talk about is that peasants would wear more neutrals, so more browns, blacks, um, things like that. Royalty wears purple, gold, um, sorry, um, red, like this. This is beautiful, very nice off the shoulder, as you can see, very nice sleeves. Um, all their dresses had really nice detailing, things like that. Like. Look at this beautiful sleeve. I love it. This is in the Met Museum. Absolutely beautiful. Turquoise. Nice color. Um, also here you can see the detailing, the puff sleeves, the waist detail, things like that. Women wore petticoats under their dresses. There were also cage skirts, hoop skirts, things like that. This is a picture just all about sleeves, um, tiered sleeves. This is a cap sleeve down here. We still use those kind of sleeves today. Slit sleeve, things like that. Your sleeves are very important. I know it's a minuscule part of a dress, but your sleeve tells time period. It tells um, their position in the castle, in their world, things like that. So sleeves are very, very important, no matter what you think. Unless you think that, and then great. Then we kind of, okay, let's just get into the 1920s. So, going from the 19. 20s. Um, I did a show, we're just going to go over here, I did a show called Describe the Night where there was the 1920s, the 40s, um, the 80s, and 2010s all wrapped into one show. So it led me down a very large rabbit hole of 
of um, of just different time periods. So I found a lot of research on a lot of different stuff. I've been researching time periods for all of my costume career. I did a show called One Man, Two Governors. Um, that was all in the 60s. We did that in the like 60s time period. We do a lot of our shows in the 80s, actually. Our director really likes that. So let's talk about the 20s. So as you can see here, from 1920 to 1929, a lot of it is drapery. I will show more pictures about drapery. Um, of course, you should know from the 20s, flappered girl dresses, as you can see here and here, uh, here as well. A lot of drapery, a lot of layering. You can see that they got the drapery from the, um, the tins, I guess. Also, your dresses, your highest dresses in this time period were just at the knee, and that was a little scandalous, I'm going to be honest, back then. This was also during the Roaring Twenties, just to give you context, um, decade-specific things now that I'm going to show you. So the 1920s, as you can see here, a lot of drapery, a lot of pulling together, a lot of fabric is being used on these dresses. These were pretty long dresses. Um, these were for older women. Um really nice um finger curls were the hairstyle back then um yes also they had a lot of nice patterns a lot of their clothes were very very nice um here's also a lot of drapery you can see as um their waist their waists are pulled together here um a lot of pulling like i said um here's also a snapshot of the 20s by each year um, as you can see, a lot of fabric is being used. Uh, hats were very, very essential. You can see up here that their dresses got shorter during 27. Um, yeah. A lot of hats. A lot of hats. Yeah. So let's go into the 40s. This should be the 40s. So you can see that dresses got shorter, a lot of pattern, um, this collared and button down dress was very popular in the 40s, but I also found women started to wear trousers, not as much as the 60s or the 50s, but they did start to wear trousers in the, <clears throat> in the 40s. A lot of dresses I've noticed are like this, the, I mean this is not out of the 40s it is a 40s inspired dress but they have a lot of bun bunching at the um, bust area pulled in waist and then a flare skirt so like this bunching at the bust pulling at the waist a flare skirt um, this was a more fancy dress for the 40s obviously as you can see but like I said a flowy skirt pulled in waist this is totally different from the 20s if you were paying attention the 20s did barely had a waistline if any a lot of drapery a lot of fabric usage um yeah so completely different as you can see it has a really nice back detail a low um a low back with a big old bow very i love this dress actually and the color it's beautiful also, this was a little bit fancier. As you can see here, this is kind of the same. This one here, like I was saying, um, it actually has the same waist detail as the other dress I showed you that was 40s inspired. Um, sorry. Um, er, her waist actually goes in between her bust, and then her waist is pulled in, a flare skirt, so very very nice trousers like I was saying um like I also said the button collar dresses very popular back then they're also very popular in the 60s which we will be talking about next um as we get into later and later decades you'll really realize how much the previous era really played into the next and how when we get to the 1990s you can just see so many references um, and how it's hard to actually be like this is their own era because a lot of eras are usually mixing and matching their own styles. 
So first I want to show you like teenage early 20s fashion, which this, I absolutely love it. I love the green. As you can see, <laughs> the skirts and shirts and shorts and things definitely got shorter above the knee. Um, they had really nice patterns in the 60s, the 70s, really nice colors like this. Like, look how beautiful that is. Um, in the 60s, bell bottoms actually became a thing. Um, they really boomed in the 70s, though. I love this picture. I love the, um, the dresses, the tights. That, that was a huge thing. Um, pattern dresses and then big colorful pattern tights as well. Um, this outfit I love actually it's so cute um, Birdie who was a huge model back then um, she has those iconic eyelashes um, this was one of her outfits you can see the tights the skirt super short for the time period um, colors these patterns I will also talk about androgyny and how that has played into fashion and things like that once I go into talking about LGBTQ influence on fashion. So also crop tops came, in, came into style in the 60s. Honestly, women got super, like I said in the 20s, they got kind of scandalous with those low Vs and those short dresses, but I would say in the 60s, women really, really did what they wanted. They said, you know what, I'm going to wear a crop top if I want. And guess what? I look good. Period, love. So, like I was saying, um, shorter hemlines, shorter shirts for sure. Bell bottoms became a thing. Yes. So, let's just go back. Um, like I said here about the pattern tights, the pattern dresses. And look, she just pulls it off. These actually aren't pattern. It's like fishnets, but it's... These actually aren't patterned. They're like fishnets, but square instead of diamonds. Um, so now I'm going to get into more of Mad Men style in the 60s, just because I adore Mad Men. Beautiful costumes. Like here, like look at this dress, that petticoat underneath it. Girl got it going on. Betty Draper is a style icon. <laughs> Look at this. First of all, she's beautiful. But the dress, the button down, like I said, um, kind of, kind of the same dresses like I showed you in the 40s to the 70s because we're not gonna skip just to the 80s. 70s are important too. Um, so as you see here, bell bottoms really became in style here and here. A lot of belts, um, clogs definitely came in style, so, yep. Um, also, which also came back into style, were really high waistlines that happened right under the bust, as you can see here. Um, this was kind of like hippie, like, uh, I don't want to say hippies, but like hippie style, um, kind of more reserved more conservative things like that so yeah I started okay um like I was saying bell bottoms huge thing look at that outfit a lot of matching a lot of bell bottoms things like that um share a huge style icon for the 70s huge Look at all this pattern. She did wear low rise bell bottoms, but they still work and she looks damn good. Darn good. Um, also going into like teenager fashion, shorter dresses for sure. Uh, you kind of, uh, you kind of lose the collar unless they're wearing button down shirts that they tie up. I've noticed a lot. Oh, what I wanted to talk about is Men's fashion was just as colorful, just as flamboyant, just as beautiful as the women's in the 70s for sure. And that definitely continues from the 60s and takes from the 60s and continues in the 80s for sure. Um, just look at how colorful they are. <laughs> look at that collar. Look at it. Gotta love it. 
Um, yeah, so that's about the 70s. Um, let's go to the 80s. Personally, I'm going to be honest. Personally, the 80s was not my favorite fashion decade, even though we do take a lot of looks from it today. Mom jeans, for sure. I love sweater. I love sweaters. Um, patterns, I love that. So, I just want everyone to be aware that the 80s, for me personally, is not the best. So, like, look at this. She pulls it off back then, but a big thing then was huge denim jacks, jackets with all these accessories, as you can see, these buttons. Gold accessories were huge. Chanel right here. She pulled it off, though. She's looking good. Um, this is Al Allison. Al yes, sorry, Alyssa. Alyssa Milano, who is still famous today. Um, as you, like these big socks, also like leg warmers. She's a teenager here, of course, and she, these shoes. Whew. Big hair, big big hair. Yeah, a, a big trend in the eighties was oversized things, oversized jackets oversized pants women definitely got more into men's style i would say um their blazers had shoulder pads for sure look at this like look how old, oversized this this looks but looks great they definitely had bold co colors bold patterns uh this outfit's pretty interesting i would say um, mom jeans that definitely had carroted tops. Let me show you what exactly carroted top is. Should be like right here. Yep. Um, carroted tops like this, which is still is definitely still a thing that we have today going on. Acid wash jeans or just color wash jeans. Let me show you some color wash, colored denim. This skirt. Um, that was a huge thing in the 80s. If you put a girl in a skirt looking like that, your audience will 100% know you are in the 80s. So, yes. Also a big thing, big patterns, like I said, big oversized things like this. Just a uh, big old high-waisted pants. Love high-waisted pants. Um, these oversized shorts. Sneakers like this. Um, I forgot to mention in the 60s, but the 60s were huge for their go-go boots. So, yes. Um, also just denim. Denim was a big thing. High-waisted mom jeans, like I said. So, yeah. Let's go on to the 90s. The 90s were pretty iconic. Very iconic, let me rephrase. Uh, especially with the Friends girls, Rachel, Monica, and Phoebe, fashion is pretty unmatched, pretty cute, I would say. Um, but in the 90s, a lot of layering happened, as you can see here with this cute little dress and that cute daisy shirt here with Rachel or Jennifer Aniston, tank top, tank top over a t-shirt, here, flannel big baggy jeans more layering here and here super cute um also pants like these were huge um and that tied up shirt was a huge thing oh we can talk about this man right here um m pants like this were huge jeans for men a huge huge thing in the 90s um also this picture which i love bomber jackets for men and girls um, high-waisted jeans, like I said, turtleneck, and layering with a flannel. Huge, um, huge fashion statement there. Like I said, mom jeans. You can see how thick that denim is. Um, that's Monica. Yep. So, that's the 90s. So, let's just talk about the 2000s. Specific shows and movies have really had an impact on me as a designer by looking at their silhouettes, their their costume choices, their colors, things like that, that can, that really just, if you're paying attention as an audience, I really think you'll remember it. 
So now, my favorite part of the entire video, although I love talking about clothes, um, let's talk about the LGBTQ influence on these time periods and on these fashion statements and looks and styles. So first, I want to talk about the 1950s, which I know we did not directly cover, but yes. So in the 50s, women really started to wear trousers. Like I said, in the 40s, there was a little bit of it, and then it really bloomed in the 50s to 60s. And then until the 1970s, the trousers served as an identification for lesbians. Uh, although not all lesbians adopted it, of course, because some um, still liked their feminine qualities and identities and wanted to emphasize that, which is great. I love it. Um, let's then go to, let's talk about, let's just next talk about the age crisis. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I want to go in order. So we are going to talk about Stonewall and lesbian style really evolved moving from butch to femi, um, towards an androgynous anti-fashion look, which is why it di it diversified styles that often reference subcultures like punk, goth, like that, things. Like I was saying, um, towards the 60s and the 70s, how a lot, oh, and the 80s, uh, blazers, trousers, they were really dressing like, well, a man in that time period. So, next, I want to talk about the age crisis, which was it was a big deal. A lot of fashion designer actually died during that time, including Perry Ellis, Houston, and Bill Robinson. And they were um, featured as a wide range, they were featured for a wide range of activists that made t-shirts for ACT UP, Queer Nation, the Lesbian and Gay Rights March in Washington, and the iconic Read My Lips. Um, this emphasized gay rights and human rights. The ex exhibition, exhibition concluded with a section on gay wedding fashions as the tutorial expression of the issue of marriage equality. So yes, let me show you a look from that, um, from that. Um, a black skirt with black pants a multicolored iridescent shirt with a cardigan honestly this look really screams to me androgyny it's beautiful i love the colors i love how the so waist down you really get a sense of formality the black pants the dress shoes and then up top you have what i feel like would be a sense of the self in this marriage because this is for a wedding look um, yes. So, also I want to talk about another thing in the 90s. Um, it's really, the, the fashion extended its influence on the runway. I've actually been watching Pose recently, so I wanted to talk a little bit about balls, which I did read about London, London, and London, about how that totally influenced the fashion runway um, scene about how balls influenced fashion then and how fashion then influenced balls and I think that's really cool actually. <laughs> um, it ex Like I was saying in the 1990s it extended its influence on the runway especially when it came to subjects perceived as taboo. French designer Jean Paul, I mean a butcher this I'm really sorry, Galtier, I did not take French. <laughs> he made his campy cone bestiaire dress in 1984 and then went on to make skirts for men. Like, I uh, I don't think that was his design, but just like the marriage fashion I just showed you. Gianni Versace, v Versace, Versace, um, started to explore BD BDSM in his 1992 collection, Miss s which I will show you some looks from. One sec. 
second. So if you remember, like I was saying, why are you doing that? BDSM looks like this. Um, a lot of bondage, leather, gold, buckles, things like that. He used... So all of this really influenced fashion. Um, yes. So, in conclusion, for my final thoughts, I wanted everyone... This video's purpose was to really inform everyone about time periods, how the LGBTQ community really influenced it. And if you do not believe that the LGBTQ community should have rights, then you shouldn't wear clothes. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That you, if you really do not think that these people deserve rights, then you do not believe in fashion and you don't understand, you don't understand it, you don't understand how it can help someone and you need to think about your position on your ideologies. So that's the end of the video. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, <laughs> it's been a really long one today. I just, I'm just really passionate about the subject and I love talking about clothes. So without further ado, I would like you all to like, subscribe, follow this account, um, sign petitions to get LGBTQ rights. Um, for transgender people to to really help especially with the new bill passed so yeah yeah also donate I mean it, it'll super help hopefully so yeah okay bye guys I really hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something I really do I definitely learned stuff when I was researching things about it to talk about so thank you so much don't forget to like su subscribe follow all that go to our twitter account our facebook account our instagram account go follow all of those so you can get updates about videos and everything uh hopefully i'll have another next video for you next week so yeah bye guys Hi, we are your IFA co-founders. I'm Ellie. And I'm Miriam. And thank you so much for watching our videos. You guys can learn more about our cause down below at our website, www.inspirationfinearts.org. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We couldn't be where we are without the support of you guys, so make sure to send in videos of the things that you've learned during classes and pictures of the art that you completed. Everything you send in will be featured on all our social media platforms. Thanks for supporting us, and until next time, go find your inspiration! inspiration.